all about digging deep into systems. You're going from high level alerts to on the ground behavior. It's critical skill in any security operations role and the exam will test your ability to understand what's happening on the host, how to trace events through logs and how to build a picture of what really happened. Hi there, I'm Kyle Winters, Technical Advocate at Cisco, and welcome back to the CCNA Cybersecurity video series. Domain 3 shifts the focus to the systems themselves, the endpoints where attacks often take place. This domain is all about understanding what's happening on individual machines. If you've ever worked with system logs, investigated malware activity, or tried to trace unusual behavior on a host, you'll recognize just how important these skills are. Host-based analysis makes up 20% of the CCNA cybersecurity exam, and it's all about visibility at the endpoint level. Whether it's a laptop, a server, or a virtual machine, your ability to understand what's going on locally is critical to investigating and responding to threats. Let's start with security tools. You'll need to understand how host-based intrusion detection systems, antivirus and anti-malware, and host-based firewalls work. This exam may ask you to compare how these tools function, what they protect against, and how they contribute to overall monitoring. A host-based IDS, for example, looks for suspicious behavior on the machine itself, things like unusual processes or privilege escalation attempts. Antivirus tools use signatures or behavioral detection to identify malware. Host-based firewalls control inbound and outbound connections, and they can help limit lateral movement inside a network. Next, you'll need to recognize key operating system components, especially for Windows and Linux. You don't need to memorize every system file or registry key, but you do need to know how to identify users, processes, services, and running tasks. Expect to see questions that reference command line outputs, or log files and ask you to interpret what's going on. Think about tools like Task Manager, Netstat, PS, Top, or Journal CTL, those kind of outputs. This domain also gets into attribution. That's about understanding who or what is behind an incident. You'll want to know terms like assets, threat actors, indicators of compromise, and indicators of attacks. You should also understand the concept of chain of custody, especially if the data you're collecting might be used as legal evidence. The idea is that once you've identified evidence, you need to preserve its integrity and document its handling. It's a key part of digital forensics. Speaking of evidence, you'll want to be able to identify different types of evidence from logs or investigation artifacts. The exam blueprint calls out best evidence, corroborative evidence, and indirect evidence. Best evidence is direct and trustworthy, like a log entry showing a successful login from a known attacker's IP. Corroborative evidence supports a conclusion, like two different logs showing the same behavior. Indirect evidence might suggest something happened, but doesn't prove it on its own. Understanding how these types of evidence play into incident response is a huge part of real world analysis. One of the most important skills in this domain is the ability to interpret logs. This could be logs from an operating system, a SIM or SOAR platform, a security application, or even raw command line outputs. For example, if you see a Linux auth.log entry showing repeated failed login attempts from a foreign IP, that's a red flag. If you see a sudden registry change on a Windows host that disables antivirus, that's another red flag. The goal is to be able to spot suspicious behavior and understand what it might indicate. You'll also see questions about malware analysis tools, especially sandbox environments or detonation chambers. These tools run suspicious files in isolated environments to see what they do. You might be asked to interpret the output of a sandbox report, looking at things like hashes, URLs, registry modifications, or network connections. Even if you've never worked in a malware lab, take time to study what typical malware behavior looks like because the exam will want you to recognize it. Here's a good study tip. Download some sample logs or look up malware sandbox reports from public tools like any.run or hybrid analysis. Spend 15 minutes just reading through them and trying to spot indicators, you know, things like unusual processes, outbound connections to unknown IPs, weird file names, etc. That kind of hands-on reading can really sharpen your pattern recognition skills. 
So this wraps up domain three, which again is all about digging deep into systems. You're going from high level alerts to on the ground behavior. It's critical skill in any security operations role and the exam will test your ability to understand what's happening on the host how to trace events through logs, and how to build a picture of what really happened. In the next video, we'll expand our view again and dive into network intrusion analysis, where we'll analyze traffic on the wire and use tools like Wireshark and PCAPS to spot threats moving across the network. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.